and welcome to Talking Science with Dr. Todd and Natalia. Today we want to talk to you about a very important yet controversial topic, the anti-vaxxer movement. According to the CDC, routine vaccines given to kiddos in the last two decades will prevent hundreds of millions of illnesses, tens of millions of hospitalizations, and prevent over 700,000 deaths. And that's just in the United States alone. That's amazing. But despite the effectiveness of vaccines, there has been a frightening trend over the last decades of parents choosing not to vaccinate their children based on anecdotal evidence and unsubstantiated medical claims, such as vaccines are the cause of autism, vaccines aren't 100% effective, and that vaccinated children stand a greater chance of getting sick from the vaccination rather than becoming immune to the disease it's hoping to prevent. And these claims are being championed predominantly by non-scientists, bloggers, and entertainers rather than by medical researchers and professionals. That's like going to your mechanic for marital advice or to replace your knee. That just doesn't make sense. You haven't met my mechanic. Jack has an excellent bedside manner. Makes sense. First, what exactly is a vaccine? A vaccine is an agent that stimulates a person's immune system to produce antibodies to a specific pathogen protecting the person from a disease. Vaccinations became routine in the late 18th century when Edward Jenner administered cowpox, which is minimally harmful to humans, to an eight-year-old boy so that he could acquire immunity to the then deadly smallpox. And that's how vaccines work. You get an inactivated, attenuated, or a portion of a version of a pathogen you're hoping to avoid. There have been vaccines created for measles, typhoid, polio, mumps, cholera, influenza, HPV, meningitis, and small... And that's just to name a few. And if it weren't for these life-saving vaccines, many of us wouldn't even be here because our parents or even our grandparents wouldn't have lived long enough to reproduce. Hey, if you've played the Oregon Trail, you know the likelihood of dying from an infectious disease like typhoid was high before there was vaccines. But vaccines are most effective if herd immunity is high. Herd immunity occurs when a population is protected from an infectious disease because a large percentage of the population has become vaccinated and are immune. And there are certain people who cannot be vaccinated, such as those with a compromised immune system or infants under a year. Like this? Where'd you get a baby, Todd? Amazon Prime, next day service. And if you haven't been vaccinated or you choose not to vaccinate your kids, you can thank herd immunity for keeping your family safe. But if too many choose to forego vaccinations, herd immunity drops, and that's when outbreaks occur. For instance, look at the 2014 measles outbreak at Disneyland that left over 90 people infected with the preventable disease. The source of the outbreak is currently unknown. It could have been an unvaccinated kid, adult, or someone in the 2% who didn't gain immunity from the vaccine, or someone who could not be vaccinated due to a compromised immune system. So why do anti-vaxxers choose not to vaccinate? That's a great question, Dr. Todd. Some anti-vaxxers argue that vaccines aren't 100% effective. And they're right. For instance, the MMR vaccine isn't 100% effective. It's 95% effective for one dose and 98% effective for two doses. With numbers like that, I'll take my chances. Some anti-vaxxers argue that vaccines cause autism. This claim is based on a British study published in 1998 that was famously debunked in 2011 as an elaborate fraud. And since that fraudulent research was published, multiple studies have been conducted to test whether vaccines cause autism. The verdict? Vaccines do not cause autism! Yay! They just don't. If someone is healthy enough and old enough, they should get vaccinated. It's selfish not to, as you put the rest of the population at risk. So parents, I think it's great that you're taking the initiative and doing the research, but question is, where are you getting your facts? Are you getting them from doctors and peer-reviewed journal articles or from anti-vaxxer websites, entertainers, and bloggers? Remember what Abraham Lincoln said, don't believe everything you read on the internet. That dude was hella wise. Aww. Now, I challenge anti-vaxxers to read fact-based scientific articles rather than blogs that are oftentimes filled with unsubstantiated pseudoscience. Because this isn't just about potentially saving your children, it's about maintaining herd immunity and protecting the population at large. Because we're only as strong as our weakest member of the herd. And for those of you who don't like needles... I bet you'd like mumps and measles a whole lot less. 
Thank you for watching Talking Science, but be sure to subscribe by clicking on this Dancing Todd. Go Todd, go. Show them how it's done. Look at that shimmy. Shake it. If you don't get your vaccine, how can you have any immunity? How can you have any immunity if you don't get your vaccine?